Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about Excel's table function. As you can see on this active sheet, we see a bunch of data. In each cell, we have text or numbers. And uh, in Excel, we call this area of data a data range. And the data range is a little bit different from data table. As you have seen from other examples, in data range, you can independently operate on this table. For example, if I want to create unit price, I simply do this revenue divided by units. So it's C2 divided by B2, and then I can create a unit price of $42. This is how data range operates. But sometimes if we reorganize this data range into a data table, it's much more convenient to operate within Excel. So to do this, we're going to select this data range and go to Insert. The third one on Insert is Table. Click on Table. And then the pop-up menu would ask you where is the data for your table. We've already selected A1 to C7, so this is a range. The top row here is the header for the table because each one of them reflects what the column of data means. So we're going to make sure that my table has headers is checked and then click OK. Now you see that this data range has been converted into a table. And when the data is in table form, Excel would automatically give the table a color theme that makes it much easier to read the data. And on top of the tab, when you select the data table, you're going to see that there's a table design. And within this table design, it has a name for the table and has a bunch of operation, operating tools that then you can use for the table and uh, you can export it. And then in this area of the ribbon, you can decide the table styles. And let's go through each one of them. So if you uncheck header row, and it's going to remove that row, you can treat the first column differently. And it can add a total row on this table. If you check it, it's going to calculate the total. And it can treat the last column differently. And it can add the filter button or not. So this allows us to select different ranges or different values within each column. So for now, we're going to keep the filter button. And then you can bend the rows. That's what we're currently doing. If we uncheck this, we're going to see that the rows are of the same colors. They are no longer banded. And alternatively, we can bend the columns. So let's return to bend the rows. And on the right, you can select different table styles, mostly different color themes. And the default is blue. Let's just keep it as is. We can, if we select different colors, it's going to make the table look differently. So these are some of the basic operations of uh, tables in Excel. And you notice that the table is named table 1. Let's change the name and give it a more intuitive name. Actually, if you select the table without the first row, you're going to see that this range in Excel is named as table 1. Really, table 1 represents A2 to C7. This is the range for table 1. And let's rename this table as sales enter. So you see that the name of the table has changed from table one to sales. And if we go to formulas and take a look at the name manager, we're going to see that sales has been named within the Excel. If we type in sales, Excel would recognize it's referring to this range. And the sales is referring to within the table from A2 to C7. That's what we just did. 
So next, let's say we want to calculate the total revenue in this table. So I'm going to do a sum, parenthesis, and we're going to refer to the revenue column within the table called sales. So if I type S, you're going to see here, here are the possibility of S's Excel already tells you. And the first one, sales, that's the table that we want. You can see that it shows this is a table. And we're going to use, you can either use the mouse to click on it, or you can use the tab key, T-A-B, on your keyboard to select the highlighted choice. Here, the highlighted one is sales. So tab. And now it's going to look for what's within this table. I'm going to use the square parenthesis. And next, it's going to ask me which one do I want. I want to use the revenue column. As you can see, if you use the down arrow, you can highlight the revenue here. And that's what we want. Again, use the tab key. And now close the square parenthesis, close the parenthesis, and enter. Now we have the total revenue. It's $155,480. So next, let me show you an advantage of table because it is readily expandable. Let's say we want to add additional. Let's say we want to add an additional record, Amanda. And Excel automatically recognizes that we have typed in a new name and expanded the table range. And now if you actually select the new table range, you're going to see that it's still called sales. So the sales name now applies to an additional row in this table. Let's say Amanda has purchased 400 units and the total revenue from her is $5,000. As you can see, once you add a new record, this total revenue number has automatically changed because it has recognized additional record has been added to the sales table. So in addition, we can do something else. Let's say we want to add another column in this table. Let's call this unit price. So Excel recognizes this, and it has put an additional column in this table. And the unit price is simply revenue divided by units. And to do this in Excel, all we need to do is to key in equals square parenthesis. And uh, if you type in, as you can see here, if you type in this add sign, which is on top of the number two, um, if you type in add sign, it's going to select something in this row. So we're going to do the tab key again, since this is already highlighted, add. And the numerator is revenue, right? So uh, our choices are name, units, revenue, unit price, so use the down arrow to select this to revenue and use the tab key to type in revenue and close the square parenthesis divided by. And then again, square parenthesis, use the tab key in this row. The one we want to divide it by is units. So use the down arrow to select units and use the tab key to select that. You can type these things in as well. And then click the square parenthesis and then enter. So the beauty here, of course, is I only need to input this formula once. And then Excel would recognize that and extend this formula to all the other rows. Now I have calculated the unit price for every single row. That concludes this video.